Welcome everyone to today's J&J Marketing Cafe. I'm Jessica Lempen, CEO of Photo Art Pavilion. Today, my business partner, Joanne Hennig, will be going over a very important topic, building your referral program. It's, is. There's a lot of content, a lot of information. I hope you have your notepads handy. And Joanne, I think we're kind of excited for this one. So if you don't mind, the floor is yours. I don't mind, Jess. Thanks for that introduction. Um, and I hope I get this right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've been working on this topic for probably three weeks. It is extensive. So I want to make sure that you have an opportunity to grab your paper and pencil. Of course, you know that we do record these meetings. So you'll be able to go back to this recording at a future date to sort of delve into it a little bit deeper if that's what you'd like to do. Uh, also, just to jump out back quickly on our um, workshops that we have coming up, Jessica and I are going to be co-leading those. So you'll be able to be in the field with us. We will gently guide you as much as you'd like or leave you be as much as you like. So they're always fun. And we also make sure that the workshops are easy for all of us to get around. So we try to caution uh, those that you don't have to really be so worried about your physical conditions and things like that. We do make it so that we can all get around very easily and work together. Also with the open calls, I'm excited really for both of those coming up. Uh, as Jessica mentioned, Rich LaBella is a uh, accomplished, very deeply accomplished a uh, wildlife photographer. I'm very excited to have him as our juror for that um, exhibit. And also Stuart Gordon. Stuart is uh, uh, also an accomplished photographer. He uh, uh, helps out with uh, filling up the spaces at Getty Images. So uh, we're really excited to have him as part of that as well. So all of that is additional things that we do here at Photo Art Pavilion. But today I want to talk to you exclusively about building your own referral program. So last month, uh, I put together an easy J&J &J marketing cafe topic. So that I thought that this month that I, it was time that I would present something that was a little bit more, uh, had a little bit more substance to it, a little bit more uh, beef to it. So again, please grab the paper and pencil and your favorite caffeine beverage if you'd like, and let's dig in. So before someone makes a purchase, they usually do a little bit of research, right? They do maybe go to Google, do a search. They may check reviews. Think of services like TripAdvisor. Okay, if you're doing a if you're doing any type of traveling, typically you'll go to TripAdvisor and look at locations and then look at the reviews that are underneath there. But most people, you and me included rely on others that we know and that we trust, like friends and family. And these are the recommendations that are really trustworthy trustworthy to uh, potential art buyers. So if someone you know tells you to try a particular product or service, chances are you'll at least consider it, like a movie recommendation. You'd watch a movie if someone suggested it, correct? I mean, word of mouth marketing, it totally works. I and mean, I'm always on a weekend, on a Friday night, Saturday night, texting my kids saying, hey, what's, what's a good movie out there? I'd like to watch something that's recommended. So in a nutshell, this is why building a referral program of your own can be so very effective to help you grow your art photography business. So what I'm going to do briefly is lay out the who, the what, the where, the why, and the how as it relates to a, a referral program. So first of all, who? is your referral program target. So if you've been on these J&J &J cafes in the past, you've heard us mention the three Fs, right? Friends, family, and fans. Those are the obvious targets. But what about anyone who's ever made a purchase of your art in the past or has attended one of your exhibits in the past and you've gathered an email address? They can help you grow a tree, and I call it a tree of new customers. Old customers become referrers, new customers become referrers, and on and on and on. The referral program approach must be strategic in nature in order for it to grow the way you'd like it to grow. So, okay, what is a referral program? If it's done the right way, a referral program is a marketing strategy 
where the seller encourages their existing customers to refer new customers. Usually an incentive or reward is offered. Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> usually an incentive or reward is offered on both sides of this referral program. So the existing customer gets an incentive or an award, and it is also offered a new customer a reward or an incentive as well. So the rewards offered to the referrer can be something as easy as a gift card or something like a, a Yeti hot, hot and cold tumbler with your name on it. Rewards offered to the referee or the new customer are usually a percentage discount on a future purchase. Rewards are executed simultaneously. So once the referee becomes a new customer. So the purpose of this marketing technique is to encourage referrals that generate new customers that generate new revenue, not just, hey, here's a friend. You wanna make sure that you're engaging that friend or that referral and making turning them into a, a customer of yours. Once that new customer makes a purchase, then both customers are receiving their incentive at the same time. It's a simultaneous reward. So where do art buyers look for recommendations? Well, when an art buyer is looking for a recommendation on a good artist, they typically look to social media. They may post a question or poll their friends to get suggestions on anything from restaurants to movies and even art, okay? They'll go into groups on social media. They'll follow artists on social media. So that's a definite place to uh, where, where future art buyers will look for recommendations. Online reviews are good. Uh, think of Yelp and Google, and even locally in your own community, there's a, uh, a new app. It's not so new, but uh, it's called Nextdoor. If you've ever had an opportunity to take a look at that, you could start to really saturate your art presence in your local community through Nextdoor and start building some recommendations through there. Word of mouth, we mentioned, uh, ask your colleagues, your neighbors or acquaintances for recommendations. Also, art buyers will read blogs. If they're that interested in picking up a, a unique art piece, they'll read blogs that are industry specific to, um, to what it is that they're looking for. And then also an expert. If I'm looking for something, if I'm looking for a new art, art piece, I'm going to look for art critics. I'm going to look at galleries. I'm going to look online at industry specific websites for these recommendations. So if your art buyer already have these channels to accumulate recommendations, why should you build a referral program? Good question, right? It's a lot of work. I'm not gonna say it's not a lot of work. It's definitely a lot of work. Well, creatives create customer referral programs because word of mouth is a powerful and cost-effective form of doing your marketing. It's a great way to expand your audience and generate more revenue. Referral programs, build trust. People may not trust a random testimonial or random review that they read on Yelp or Google, but they will definitely trust a friend, a family member, or an associate of theirs. There's also a low cost of acquisition, a low customer acquisition cost that comes with a referral program. And in, in return to with that low acquisition cost, higher revenue results uh, start to pay off. It's a lot cheaper than paying for ads on social media or other places, even print magazines or local, local market print, things like that. So the cost of the acquisition and the higher revenue results has actually been calculated over time because this is not a new concept, referral programs, but it's actually a five times more revenue than the standard advertising uh, approach to bringing in a new customer. A referring program, a referral program, it can kind of be like a mini gold mine if you work it right. So just think along those lines. And they also help you um, increase your customer retention. And for certain referral programs are going to build some loyalty with your customer base. So you don't, I don't want to overwhelm you with implementing the referral program. So I want to break this down into small manageable steps on how to build a referral program. So let's kind of get started a little bit, a uh, little bit deeper at this point. So number one, goals, 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 goals. You got to have goals. So make sure you put some targets together before you begin. So I want to build a referral program. Great. 
okay, you're just gonna willy nilly go at it. No, we don't do that. We've, we've learned over time through the J&J cafes that we want to have our goals set. So maybe your goal is to have one new customer sale per month or one new customer lead per month. These are your goals. So make sure you tailor them to you. Don't overreach to something that may not be attainable. And we've talked about that in the past as well. Secondly, get your incentives set up for both the referrer and the new buyer. For the referrer, as I mentioned earlier, you can offer something as simple as a gift card, an autographed or numbered limited edition print, a donation to their favorite charity in their name, or that Yeti Tumblr that I mentioned. Make sure that Tumblr has your name on it. And for the new customer, give them a unique one-time use uh, discount code or discount coupon. So now when the, when the existing company, a customer refers someone new to you and that new sale comes in, those unique codes start to, uh, you'll see them. And now you know to offer to go back to the existing cu customer and give them their reward and to also then uh, have the new customer is going to be utilizing their unique coupon code. So that's the way that's going to be working all at simultaneously at the point of sale. So you want to also make sure that you set up your online storefront page so that it leaves a great first impression because that is where your referrers or your existing company customers are going to drive the new customers. So get your headshot in order, make sure it's, it's awesome. Uh, get your bio set up to perfection. I like to always tweak my bio. I'm always uh, poking around with that. And then go through your collections and make sure you remove any mediocre work that's there. Um, make sure that your descriptions and your keywords are all set up properly on your offerings that are on your, uh, uh, your storefront. And make sure also that your phone number, your email, your social media links are on your storefront as well. Because if a customer, if a, an existing cu customer drives a new customer over to your website and they're looking to engage with you, give them every opportunity to do that. Don't leave them hanging because then you're just really wasting everybody's time. Get your new customers, I'm sorry, get your existing customers to spread the word. So once you have their attention, send them an email laying out how the referral program works. Within that email, have direct links to your e-commerce store and have a unique code just for them that they can share with their friends, their family, and their associates. You could ask if you can text them the code, if, if you have that type of a relationship, that way they can just share the referral program directly using their mobile device. But that's entirely up to you how you want to engage your specific audience. And if you don't have expensive marketing software, which most of us don't, you can still build and cultivate a refer referral program that works. Using a referral code that is unique to a would-be referrer is definitely has to be in order. And then whenever that new buyer uses that code to purchase from you, you can track the referral back to that one specific customer and give them their just rewards. So now that you have a new customer, thanks to your existing customer, you can repeat the referral process uniquely with the new customer and so on and so on. So this repetition creates a flow of new business all because of one single customer. So think about that. One customer refers you, you gain a new customer, and then that new customer becomes an existing customer, which becomes a new referral uh, option for you. Okay, so that's how I, why I call it growing a tree of customers. So you want to promote your referral program in a variety of ways, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, and make sure your messaging is consistent, regardless of where you're doing the promoting. Are you doing the uh, promoting on your website? Are you doing it using social media? Are you using direct email? Are you using your phone via calls or text messages? Whatever it is that you're doing, make sure that the referral program is set up similarly across the board. Because the last thing you want to do is have a referral program going out with one set of incentives on social media and another set of, set of incentives on your website or direct mail or something else. You want it to be consistent, and maybe you want to run that uh, referral program for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever, get your, um, your data in order, and then from there, maybe make some adjustments. Because if the effectiveness starts to wane on your referral program, it's okay to pull it back, create a new refer referral program by changing up your incentives, and then you're rewarding 
to the to the sender. So a lot of information there. In your referral programs, uh, I'd like you to think about some action words or some buzzwords that might help you if you're, especially if you're uh, doing, let's say, a direct email campaign, using words like invite friends or earn swag or get 25, give 25, Inv invite friends, help your favorite charity. So these are the types of buzzwords that are going to uh, probably get some eyeballs to look back at you and maybe have that referral program start to gain a little bit of steam. Uh, I also think that if you do some research on your own and you have additional questions, obviously reach back out to us. Uh, but I do believe this is a good way to kind of think a little bit differently than what every other uh, artist is doing, which is just posting on social media, posting on social media, posting on social media. Uh, you know, I almost kind of feel like it's throwing confetti in the air. This is much more targeted and it is the root of the tree to grow your business. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to have to call it a call it an afternoon and we'll uh, we'll see you again here next month on JJ's Photo Art Marketing Cafe. Bye, bye everyone. We'll see Thanks. you next month. Bye-bye.